So I want to share a story with you that has uh, since become a song, but it's also a family story now, and you'll kind of see how that plays out. Um, when I was in college, I read an audition call, and everything about this call like screamed my name. But it wasn't just like your typical production. This was for an opportunity to be a service missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And these performers would be telling the stories of the early members of this church. And they would be sent to this, now it's a small town in Illinois, um, but in the mid-1800s, this was a place that they were seeking refuge from persecution. And they took this swamp, drained it out, and built this thriving city, and they named it Nauvoo, which meant beautiful. And it was beautiful. And they thought they were gonna be there forever, but eventually the persecution just became so intense that they had to flee um, across, the, across the plains to the Western United States. And so Nauvoo is just full of this rich history of sacrifice and stories of community and faith. Like you name it, like, oh my gosh, I wanted to be there so badly. So starting that very night when I learned about it, I determined that I was gonna weary the Lord with my request and I was gonna go. Like, I was gonna go. <laughs> and so I prayed every morning and every night and I asked him to send me to Nauvoo, to send me as a performing service missionary to Nauvoo that summer and I prayed those precise words and um, I sent in my audition tape and in the meantime I wanted to make sure that God knew I was serious about this <laughs> like I had totally um, I was completely devout in all my scripture study like I mended relationships and uh, I sought after ways to serve like fulfilled all my responsibilities like I wanted to make sure I was totally out of my way right and one night as I was praying I received the most clear impression and feeling of peace, a promise that God wanted me to be a novel. And I knew that this was a gift that he was going to give me. So callbacks went pretty well, I thought, and they were only going to choose eight girls, but I was pretty confident I would be one of them. And callbacks were on a Saturday and the following Monday, they were going to give those who would be selected a personal telephone call. So Monday rolls around and I got my telephone out and I'm like checking in between classes every minute I can, like, you know, peeking at it. And I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And my call didn't come. And I was heartbroken. And I was a little confused too, you know, like second guessing, is that really what I had felt? And I was like, no, I knew God wanted me there. And like, there was a part of me, I was ticked at God. Like you told me I was going and now, like I wasn't even on the alternate list. This was done, not happening, right? And this threw me into a faith crisis. And I eventually got to this point where like, I had a decision to make. And I could either turn my back on God like I felt he turned his back on me. Or I could love and trust him anyway. Ultimately, I chose the latter. And many hard months went by. But one morning, I received an unexpected phone call. And the woman on the other line introduced herself as the director of productions in Nauvoo. And she began to tell me that they were adding a group that summer. And this group would be a brass band to reenact a brass band that had been this integral part of the society in Nauvoo. And she was asking me to play trumpet in this band. And I will never forget when she said to me, so Kate, how would you like to be a performing service missionary in Nauvoo this summer? <laughs> Those were the exact words that I had prayed again and again. And it wasn't what I had expected, not at all. But the growth that I experienced that summer could not have happened any other way. Like it had to happen with those people that were in that band. It had to be that group. And I have, it was so orchestrated, <laughs> I was like, and I have lifelong friendships from that band. In fact, one of those band members is now my husband. <laughs> so you can see this has turned into our family creation story. It's not just my story. And the song that I want to share with you is called Believe in Dreams. 
And this is a co-write with one of my beautiful friends from that band, Megan Stebar. Shout out to Megan. And what I find fascinating is that my story getting to Nabu is not completely unique. Like every member of that original band has a crazy story of how they got there. Like even so much that it's totally on my bucket list to write a book or maybe a movie script about this because it's like good stuff. And but it extends too because as we've shared this song and this story with subsequent bands who go um, later summers, I've learned that parts of their story are reflective of my story too. And like, this is the beauty of storytelling is that we finally have this connection because we have this shared story and we realize that we have a shared experience. And for me, this connection extends generationally because now my family is connected to it. And so this time was so formative and being able to sh capture its essence in song form and share that with family and with people I love has just really been a gift. So. Without further ado, here is Believe in Dreams. <laughs> 